it's Mr. Simons and you're back talking about environmental sustainability. In particular, what we're going to look at in this video are public and private goods. If we think about private and public goods, the question we're asking is why don't markets, so markets being the private sector, why don't markets provide all the goods we need in an economy? For example, why don't we just pay someone to provide all of our army or the police force? Why don't markets just get it right and provide a nice clean environment, they don't pollute our water, and that they make sure that all of our teachers are absolutely hilarious? To understand these questions, we need to think about what is the difference between public and private goods. Let's start by thinking about this idea of public goods. The first thing is that public goods are what's called non-excludable. So any economist will be able to tell you that this is a real term. Mr. Simons is not making this up. This means that when the public good is provided, the producer, so the person who makes them or provides them, they can't exclude consumers from using them. A great example, I like this one a lot, is the idea of streetlights. I can't stop someone from using a streetlight. It's just there. I can't fence it off. I can't charge for it. It's just a streetlight. So that is a good example of a public good because I can't stop someone from using it. Now, the second thing about public goods is that they are what's called non-rival. So the idea is that if one person uses a public good, it does not reduce the amount that another consumer can use. Um, I've got some other examples here, but I like this idea about fresh air, that if I'm breathing a bunch of air, you're also able to breathe a bunch of air and we're not fighting each other for that. Or that if someone is providing a public police force, we can't say, well, this person can use it, but these other people can't have access to it. Let's remember these two things here, public goods and non-excludable, non-rival. Okay, great, Mr. Simons, you made your point, cool. So what I want you to think about here is that these two characteristics mean that a producer cannot exclude an individual or group from using the good even if they don't pay for it. But if you're a business, right, and someone can use your good without paying for it, this creates enormous red flags. This is a situation of true terror. If people can use a good and not pay for it, we get a whole bunch of people that are free riders. Free riders is an economic term. And these are people who use goods without paying for them. Again, if I'm a business and I can see that there are a whole bunch of free riders, I'm terrified. I'm like, how am I gonna make any money? So have a look here. As a result, because producers can't exclude people who do not pay, private companies, they just don't supply public goods. They can't make a profit. They can't exclude people if they don't pay. So if I think about what makes a private good, right, something that is supplied by business, well, I have to be able to exclude people. That is, people must they must pay to use. The other thing is, there has to be a rival element to it. If one person uses something, another person can't use it. Therefore, they're going to pay so that they can then use it, right? Having rival helps in terms of allowing businesses to provide it. The other thing is that there are property rights. that people own the asset, the piece of land or the good, so that if they have property rights, if they have property rights, then they can exclude others. So a private good, it's got to be excludable. 
people are going to be rival for consumption and there really needs to be some kind of property rights where you can stop people from coming in to use it. It's very difficult to find examples of pure, so 100% pure public goods. This is because many goods provided by the government could be excludable, excluded, or rival. Think about it this way. You could say that public transport, so trains, is a public good, right? The government provides it. But you could be excluded from using a train if you cannot pay the fare. So public transport is not a pure public good. But public sector goods are goods that are provided by governments and are not necessarily pure public goods. So a public sector good, they're provided by governments but not necessarily pure public goods. So a public sector good would be public transport. So in this video, we've looked at the idea of public and private goods. So this is just one environmental sustainability video in a number of them on this channel. Please subscribe, uh, find out about the latest videos that are coming through. Also make sure you go back through some of the past videos that could help build your knowledge of economics. Thanks for watching.